Welcome to RV Woodworks. My name is Raheem and today I'm going to introduce you to a jig that's going to change your life forever. For template routing, anyway. Now, this video came about because I made a couple of these chairs for my home and every friend that saw these chairs had a very consistent question for me. And the question was, how did you get all these sides to look exactly the same and there's multiple chairs and my answer to them and for many other woodworking problems is templates and templates are really cool because you can create whatever shape you want and then basically all you're doing is running this template on a bandsaw and creating the shape that you're looking for and it's usually quite simple where you take any template put some double-sided tape stick it on the workpiece that you want and then you run it through the bandsaw as close as possible to the template and then whatever is left over use a template routing bit and you clean that out and you have an absolute replica of the template that you created now the problem with that is when you're running it through the bandsaw if you have too much material left over then the router has to do so much work and there's a possibility of kickback. Now, kickback at a router is not fun. The other problem is that you might end up going inside your template and ruining your template. And I have an example of me doing just that right here to show you that it is absolutely possible to do. So, Jonathan Katzmosis actually came out with this jig. And I haven't seen very many YouTubers use it. So, I wanted to encourage and kind of Get the word out about this jig. And I'll leave a link to Jonathan Katz Moses video about how he created this jig in the video description below. Make sure to watch that after you watch this video. Above and beyond creating a jig, it's always good to tune up your power tools or any tools that you're using. And I'm going to take the opportunity in this video to show you how I tune up my bandsaw and give you some tips and tricks along the way. Now, without further ado, let's roll that intro and let's get right into it. All right, guys, in order to get started with this tune up, as we would do with any power tool, we want to ensure that it's unplugged. Now after removing the fence and the railing that the fence rides on, you go under the bandsaw table and you'll find these four bolts that we'll have to remove. And that's all there is to it to taking the bandsaw table off. Just remove it nice and slow to make sure you don't mistakenly bend one of the teeth on the blade. No matter how good that dust collection is, you're going to have sawdust. So take the time now and vacuum it all out. This will be one of those times when I'll say, do as I say and not as I do. You should be wearing gloves here to make sure you don't cut yourself with a blade. But at any rate, that's next. Let's get rid of this blade and we can access the wheels. See the bandsaw is one of those tools that has a lot of moving parts and you can use things like mineral spirits or grease remover to make sure things are nice and clean. Now folding a bandsaw blade scares you. I will leave a link to a video by Alex Snodgrass that will take all those fears away. He is by far the king of bandsaws and I highly recommend you go watch that video. But after you watch this one. At any rate, now let's tackle this rust on this tabletop. There's a bunch of cleaners out there in the big box stores that claim to be the best at rust removal. But honestly, I just use WD-40 and a Scotch-Brite. 
just take your time with it ideally go in circular motions and a little elbow grease and you'll see it'll come right off okay okay this one has a lot of elbow grease but to be fair it had a little water damage a little unfortunate water damage Now after it's all clean, you want to make sure you do some preventive measures as well to prevent that rust from coming back. And there's nothing better than a bit of paste wax. Actually I used a lot of paste wax because I don't want that rust coming back. With the rust removal complete, let's pay our attention back onto the bandsaw and let's put this thing back together. Now when putting the blade back on the bandsaw, it's important to remember that the gullet, which is the gap between each of the teeth on the blade, will go on the center of the wheel. And part of a tune-up for a bandsaw, it's very important to have the right amount of tension in the blade. And that knob on top that I was twisting ensures that you have enough tension in the blade. Now most bandsaws will have bearings next to the blade and behind the blade. And these bearings should not move while the bandsaw is running, but rather a 30 second away from the blade. This will ensure that the cut is straight and the blade doesn't wander while you make the cut. Lastly, these bearings also move front to back. And from a positioning perspective, these bearings should be in line right past the gullet of the blade. Maybe a better way to say that is directly behind the gullet. Because if it's on the gullet or the blade, it's going to damage the bearing. Now if you're gonna take the table off to do the maintenance or the tune-up, high likelihood that when you put the table back on, it's not going to be level. So make sure you have something like this, which is a one, two, three block, to ensure that you're getting the blade perpendicular to the tabletop. And once you get the fence put on, you'll also need to align the fence to ensure the zero marker causes the blade to be right next to the fence. Now after the tune-up, obviously you're going to make a test cut, and apologies for my hand, but once the cut is complete, it's very important to ensure that the width that you were going for is correct, and that the piece that you cut is perpendicular to the table. Now based on the burn marks that you'll see on the cut piece here, it clearly means I need to invest in a new blade now. Alright, let's get started on this jig. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, I made a couple of chairs recently and every friend that's come over to see the chairs, the one question they all have is how did you get it so equal to each other? Well, I'm going to give my secret away here. It's just jig. And as far as dimensions are concerned, it's absolutely rudimentary. You can make it whatever size you want. I made mine about six inches tall and about four inches wide. Now the only thing that really matters is this angle. The steeper the angle, the harder the curve you can cut on the bandsaw. I guess that'll make a bit more sense when you see me use a jig later. Even for this portion, again, there isn't an exact measurement, but it just needs to be bigger than the width of your blade. My blade is a half an inch, so I made the gap three quarters of an inch. I guess that's the beauty of this jig. It's so simple and so easy to make, yet so useful.
Now the last thing you'll need is a few spacers. I'm working with 1 8 MDF and you'll want enough spacers to allow different thicknesses of material to pass under the jig. Basically, the more spacers you have, the thicker the material that can pass under the jig. Don't worry, it'll make a lot more sense when you see me put it together. And just in case if you missed it in the intro, I did not invent this jig. Jonathan Katz Moses invented this jig and I'll put his video in the description below. What an amazing woodworker. Make sure to check him out. But after you finish this one, please. And finally, the last thing we need to do is to create two slots on each of the pieces so that we can use a T-bolt to lock it into the miter slot and ensure that there's some level of adjustment. Okay guys, let me show you how this genius jig works. With the two T-bolts placed in the T-slot, we will add three spacers. If you recall, each of these spacers is 1 8 of an inch thick, and the plywood that I'm cutting for this demo is 3 quarters of an inch thick. Then we'll finally add the jig on top and lock it down with the T-bolts. And for the placement of the jig, the blade will be buried about a sixteenth of an inch in the gap that we created. Next, we'll take our template and put some double-sided tape and stick it on the piece that we want to cut. Now the template will ride on the jig, which again is a sixteenth inch away from the workpiece and you can see the 3 quarter inch plywood rides under the jig giving enough space to run and without any trouble at all we were able to make this cut and when you see this you can see there's barely any space left over and whatever is left over we'll use a flush trimming bit and get rid of that excess. Welcome back guys. Now isn't that so simple to build? And with just a few steps, you can have yourself this jig that will help you replicate your templates as many times as you want. Once you're finished with the template, all you do is you take the double-sided tape off. And lo and behold, now I haven't done the other side, but you can see that we have a near-perfect match to the template. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the intro, now I would run this against a template routing bit, which has a bearing that's going to run against the template and make this material, whatever it might be, plywood for this particular demo, will be exactly the same as the template. And that's how we create multiple pieces that are exactly the same kind. I hope you like this video. I hope you got to take something away from it. And I hope I get to see you guys again very soon. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. We'll see you guys in the next one.